In this tutorial in Titler Pro, we'd like to show you how to put an object inside your title and make it move with different speeds by using keyframes. This comes as a request of one of our subscribers. Now in this case, we are using Titler Pro 1.5. This technique will also work with Titler Pro 1.0, which is an addition to my copy of CyberLink PowerDirector. Now if you have PowerDirector Ultimate or the 365 version, you do have a copy of Titler Pro add-on included in your product. So let's look and see what we can do. We have a video here, slow motion, of a guy sliding into home plate. And let's say we want to add a title. So I'll move to the place where I want the title, drag my playhead or time indicator there, and then we can click on the T for title room or press the F7 key. And then to get to the new blue add-on, the easiest way, I click on the down arrow, drag down to the bottom to new blue, and then I just drag that down and drop it on track number two. Now we need to edit our title. I'm going to double click on that and it starts with the enter text. I'll do control A to highlight all that and I'll just call it American Ball. And then what I'd like to do is add a style. We have other tutorials on getting into the style panel on the left side. I'll just double click on this for now. Then we'll move it down slightly. And let's enlarge it a bit as well. Okay, so now we have our title. What I'd like to do is add an object. So how do you do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is click on the file menu in the upper left corner and click on import image. When I do that, it will take me to my file system and I can select an image. I've navigated to the screen where I have the image I want. I'm going to use this baseball too. I can either double click on it or single click and click on open. And so now I have my ball. Now in this version of Tyler Pro, it simply calls it shape. It adds another track above the previous one and simply calls it shape. I can activate it by either clicking on the image or clicking on the track. And that will allow me to select either the text in track number two, the bottom one, or the ball in track number one. Let's assume we want the ball to move. So let's drag it to the upper left corner. Now, right now, if I play this, I won't see anything happen. I simply have a, an object and I have text. But let's assume we want the ball to move. We need to use keyframes to do that. So with my shape selected, highlighting the ball, I'll click on the Turn On Keyframing box on the lower left at the bottom panel. And that will elongate the panel and it will give me Add Keyframe and it simply gives it Keyframe 1. And the first frame where the ball appears is now the location of Keyframe 1. To move the cursor there, I simply click on it and you notice it snapped right on top of that keyframe. So keyframe one says at this moment, this is where the ball is supposed to be. So let's move it across the screen. Let me go near the end and, and just click anywhere I want to on the time indicator. And we'll drag to the just about the very end here. And then if I want to add a keyframe, the easiest way is to click on the little plus above the box. It says add keyframe here. And that gives me another keyframe, keyframe two. Now you've noticed that if I play it, nothing will happen because Keyframe 2 inherited all the properties of Keyframe 1, including the location. So since it didn't change, there's no apparent motion. How do I fix that? Well, I click on Keyframe 2 on the left side. It highlights my second keyframe. And then with that highlighted, all I need to do is drag the ball and move it down or wherever I want to the second location. And it's taken almost eight seconds to get there. So if I go to the beginning and I hit, click the play key, I find that the ball is slowly moving to that locale. And it will stop there. Let's assume I want it to move there more quickly. 
All I need to do is click on keyframe 2, and now I will take it and drag it closer. The closer the keyframes are, the faster the apparent action. Now it will only take two seconds for the ball to get from the location, the time of keyframe 1, to the time of keyframe 2. Let's, play, let's go to the beginning and play it, and you'll see now it's just two seconds to get from point A to point B. Now we can make it look like it's bouncing off the edge of the screen by adding a couple more keyframes. Let's do that. We'll go to this point in time, and then we'll click on the plus. It will automatically give me a new number for a keyframe. And with that highlighted, I'm going to take this and move it near the top of the screen. Let's do another one. I'll add a plus. Now it will inherit the value of keyframe 3, but I don't want it to keep that. I want it to bounce down to the bottom. And we'll do one more. We'll add a plus. Now we have keyframe 5, and I'm going to change the value of keyframe 5 by position simply by dragging the ball, putting it over there. So when we go to the beginning and we play it, we have it keyframe 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now if you want to, to have it bounce faster or slower between one keyframe and another, just go to that keyframe. Let's, let's make it bounce really quickly from keyframe 4 to keyframe 5, which means I have to move it closer together. I'll drag. But notice when I do that, all it does is it backs it up. So I not only need to drag it, but with that keyframe highlighted, I have to remember the number. Then it should bounce to keyframe 5. Let's start and see what happens if it's really quick. We have 2, 3, slow to 4, and fast to 5. So this is a slower speed, and this is a faster speed. There are other things you can do with timing of keyframes. Let me show you another, uh, another option that you have here. We're going to add a keyframe between number 3 and number 4. I'll click here, and I'll click on plus. Now it renumbers all the keyframes. So when it moves here and goes to the next one, let's watch what happens. Now the next one was what it only captured where it was on the screen. I'd like to change the location of that. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to make this one back up a little bit. It'll actually ro look like it rolls along the top of the screen. And then it will move to the next keyframe, which is all the way down. So notice the difference here. Play it one more time. Two, three, roll on four down on 5, and quick on 6. So those are some ways in which you can vary the speed of an object inside the Tyler Pro add-on just for titles. So I'll close it out, which will save it. And then, when we play our movie, when it gets to the title, this will overlay the graphic image on the lower track, and it will bounce the ball around exactly the way I want it on the screen for an effect.